NASCAR Championship Weekend approaching. It's time in the Valley November 8th. 9th and 10th. We crown four champions in three days here in the Valley of the Sun underneath the Desert Sun. This is the Inside Lane. I'm your host, Devin Henry. Join us this week as someone who is inside the trenches week in and week out as we await those champions. He is the 2007 NASCAR.com Pit Reporter of the Year, an eight-time Network Emmy Award winner, and the owner of Marty Snyder and Associates. The pit reporter and host for NASCAR on NBC and the CW from High Point, North Carolina. It's Marty Snyder. Marty, thanks hey, for Devin. joining me. How you doing, man? Everything good? I'm doing fantastic. Everything is good. It is not fall in Arizona yet, so we're keeping up with the <laughs> summer vibes. But the heat's been on this round of the playoffs, and I mean, you're sitting here doing pre-race. You go do pit reporting. You go yep. do a post-race. You're working during the week. When in the world do you have time to decompress? Uh, after the end of the season, uh, which <laughs> it's a blessing. You know, I, I grew up around NASCAR racing, so it, it's a blessing for me to be able to do this every week and to be able to, you know, talk about you know, the, the sport I, I love. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done a little bit of everything in my career from the Olympics to the NFL, to NBA, but NASCAR has always been kind of home and uh, certainly what I, what I love doing. And right now, I know that there's no sleep for anyone, whether it's on the NASCAR side, the broadcast side, in this wild card playoff round, including Talladega and now the Charlotte Roval. How have you seen during this round teams kind of adjust their strategy or adjust who they are to try to get one step closer to making that championship when week in and week out, you don't know if you're going to finish the race? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is really just been for these first two rounds, just surviving it. Uh, you know, the way NASCAR kind of lined it up this year is a lot different than it's been in the past. And so uh, certainly round number one for the Cup Series was very difficult. Round number two wasn't much easier. Uh, and hasn't been much easier. But I think once it kind of gets to the round of, of eight and you kind of get closer to, to you guys in Phoenix, it becomes a lot more normal. It becomes a lot more, not predictable, but it becomes a lot a lot simpler. And uh, I think when you look at that, that round of eight that starts out in Las Vegas, uh, then it goes to Miami, then it goes to Martinsville, which is always a chaotic race. And then it wraps up with you guys in Phoenix, obviously in the championship race. I think that round is what everybody's really looking forward to because the first couple of rounds have been very chaotic. You know, you start the, the playoffs at Atlanta, which is a chaotic race, and then Watkins Glen, which was all new to everyone, then Bristol, uh, you know, and then you get the end of the round of 12, you know, which had all these crazy races, unpredictable races with Talladega in there and then the Roval and, and so Kansas as well. So it, it's just been kind of a, a very unusual playoffs. And I'm sure no matter how unusual it is, though, it's difficult for you to see something that you've never seen before doing this for upwards of three decades now. And yeah. so when you look at what you get to do, you get to meet, interact and get to know these drivers. What yeah. are some of your favorite ways to understand them better and tell their stories? You know, I, I um, I've known a lot of them since they were they were young and uh, I've known a lot of the, you know, a lot of the crew chiefs and guys like that I grew up with, you know, and, and so I've, I'm kind of familiar with everybody. Um, but I, I think interacting with them away from the racetrack is important, building relationships away from the racetrack. Uh, but I also think keeping that, you know, division of, you know, you're not my friend or you're all my friend, but I, you know, we have to, I have to be very unbiased on, on television, which is the way I like to be, you know, I, I you can't have favorites for sure. Um, but there are certainly drivers you're closer to than other drivers, uh, crew chiefs who I'm a lot closer to than other crew chiefs. It's just the way it works out. But, uh, but that's the one unique thing. Like I've, you know, kind of done a little bit of everything in my career, you know, from NFL to NBA and all that. And the, the difference is with those sports, you're not around everybody every week. NASCAR, you're around everybody every week. You're around the same people all the time. That allows you to build a camaraderie. That allows you to build a trust level. And as a reporter, that's very important. And they can tell you things and they can say that's not for air yet. And then they'll tell you when it is for air. Um, so there's a lot of lot of elements of that in the way how you kind of work your way around the NASCAR garage area. It's a little bit different than other sports just because everybody is together all the time. And I don't know how many people know this about you, but you're also an Emmy award winning producer on top then. <laughs> As you mentioned, you've done the Olympics, you've done the NFL, the NBA, and of course, 
all of these years in NASCAR, but what is it about also being behind the camera that scratches an itch for you? Well, I, I started a production company a long time ago and we just, uh, we've kept it going. So we do a lot of the elements for NBC that air now with the features, teases, all that. Um, you know, I've, I've done stuff, stuff for HBO in the past and uh, it's, it's just fun. I like, you know, I always say, you know, while I grew up in NASCAR and I really care about the sport and I care about auto racing in general, what I really love is doing television. That's, that's my main, the main thing I love. I love live television. There's nothing like it. And so, you know, sometimes producing, uh, produce content is, is what I love to do as well, but, but live television, there's nothing quite like doing a live television show when things are, you know, kind of falling apart or changing or all of that. I, I love all of that aspect of, uh, of television, but there's nothing better in my opinion. It's, it's an art like, you know, almost anyone's job is, you know, you, there's ways to do it. Um, and do it right. But, you know, there's something about doing a good television show, whether it's live or it's scripted or it's pre-produced or whatever. And before I let you go with all these different hats that you've gotten to wear over these past few decades, you've got an opportunity that I'm sure many people wish that they could have had at some point in their life. You had the opportunity to report on your own son, Myatt, <laughs> working his way yeah. up the NASCAR ranks. That alone is incredible. But then your longtime pit spotter walks away. Yeah, yeah. And now Myatt gets to stand next yep. to you on race weekends working with you. What has that opportunity been like for you watching Myatt grow up, reporting on him, and now working alongside him essentially as a coworker now? Yeah, it's it's great. It's such a blessing. Um, yeah, I had the same pit spotter for 20 years. I've had the same camera guy for 20 some years and uh <laughs> At that all that's been great but uh yeah when mike my mike sabrini my longtime spotter decided he was gonna not want to travel as much anymore uh i knew immediately the right person to, to bring in it was my it because he did, doesn't does not have a full-time ride right now and to get to work with him every week is great it's a it's a real blessing you know it's fun to watch him race it's stressful as a dad and for my my wife andrea it's stressful to watch your your son go out there and compete, especially at a place like Talladega where you're, you know, 200 miles an hour, you know, four wide. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's been really cool to kind of follow his journey to uh, to watch him develop, you know, from a, a guy who started in, you know, Bandoleros, a, you know, really small little race cars into an Xfinity Series winning driver, which, you know, very few people get to that level. Um, and so to watch that was amazing. And uh, and then it, it's kind of sad to see the sponsorship game and, you know, you, you got to have money to race. And so we've, we've kind of not had that the last few years like we would like. So he's kind of been part time at Joe Gibbs in a few different places. And uh, and now for him to be working with me on the road is really cool because he points out all kinds of cool things that, you know, even even like Steve Letard and Jeff Burton don't pick up from the booth. He'll see them on pit road and he'll mention them to me and I'll mention it to them. They're like, Oh, that's a great point. You know? So he really helps the broadcast in a lot of ways, <clears throat> picks up on some very cool things on the radio. So it's been a blessing to be with him every week and to be able to hang out with him. And he had a great interview with Kelly Crandall that I was listening to. And he's talking about all the ways that he's grown or all the different ways that like he's seen yeah. the sport differently or he needs to work <laughs> on. So now from the dad perspective or coworker perspective, yeah. how have you seen Mike grow in this role, either as a person or what he does, or maybe a few things that he still needs to kind of work on to kind of help you out? <laughs> uh, it's kind of, well, I mean, he, he gets a lot of great information, which is, which is wonderful. And, and that's, so that's part of the reason why I knew immediately that he would be the right guy because you know, NASCAR is very much a relationship business. And, you know, Mike had had those relationships for years and he, he still has them, even though he's not around the track anymore. But Maya was the only one I could think of that could just walk up to any crew chief and go, hey, and you know, what do you think about this, you know? And uh, so he, he has been invaluable at getting some great information for me during the race to be able to use. Um, because in this new role of, of me hosting the, the pre-race show and post-race show and all that, I'm usually in meetings like all Sunday morning. So I don't have a lot of time uh, to get around the garage area and just hang out, you know, like I was when I was just a pit reporter, I could go do that. I can hang out for hours with these guys and I just don't have that time anymore. So my being able to go around, get information for me is, is, is invaluable. 
and uh, and I'm I'm very thankful. And and he's earned the trust of a lot of crew chiefs and the way he kind of goes about his business and asks questions. So uh, it's been pretty cool to watch that as well. Doing just about everything and anything inside the trenches here in NASCAR. Marty, appreciate seeing you. Thank you for joining me. Have a great rest of the year, and we'll see you here in Phoenix. We'll try to keep the heat up for you. All right. Sounds good, Devin. Be well.